In this video, we're going to discuss data basics. If you want a good reference material for this, I recommend sections 1.2 and 1.3 of the book I'm going to refer to as Biostat. Let's just jump over to the syllabus so I can show you which book I'm going to refer to as Biostat. The book Introductory Statistics for the Life and Biomedical Sciences, I'm going to call Biostat for the rest of the semester. I'll refer to the other book as Modern Dive, but once I reference that book, I'll say this again. So for now, if you want to read sections 1.2 and 1.3 out of this book, which I will call Biostat, that would help you through this lecture here. This lecture is going to cover variable types, variable relationships, and data format. The first two of these topics will be done in this format. I will call this my whiteboard for lack of a better uh, term. And the data format topic will actually be done in our studio, where we can explore a real data set and go through uh, variable types as they look and feel inside of R. So here we go. Whoops. We're going to start with variable types. It turns out all variables in the world of statistics can be broken up into two main groups. We have categorical variables and numeric variables. Categorical variables are anything with names or labels. These are things you cannot perform math on. Some quick examples might be um, colors, and that could be colors of some sort of differentiating species or even just eye color. We could say oceans. I don't know for which ocean some bluefin tuna might come from. Let's see if I know my tuna. That would be Pacific, Atlantic, Southern. Maybe I'm just making that up. Uh, continent. These are names or labels, things we cannot add together. We can't add the Pacific and the Atlantic together and get some new great ocean. That just doesn't really make sense. Numeric variables are generally numbers. That shouldn't be too surprising. Or things you can math. Things mathable. So this would be like height, weight. These are the most common of the numeric variables. Now, if you get into more complex modeling, it turns out you can break up categorical variables into two more groups. You've got, whoops, ordinal and nominal. And basically all the examples I've given you so far are nominal. Ordinal is, uh, think of like if you're running a race and you get first, second, or third. Those are names or labels, just the same, but there is a strict order to them. So here for ordinal, order matters. And just the same for numeric variables, there are two more categories that you can split up to, split numeric variables into for continuous, Think like temperature. Temperature can take on any value within any interval you specify. Or discrete. And that would be things that can only take on integer values or something like this. Like if you're going through a field and you're counting the number of poppies, you can't have half a poppy. So discrete numeric variables would be any kind of counts. If you're counting the number of animals in a population, if you're counting the number of times Old Faithful, the geyser, goes off, that would be continuous. Uh, I mean, discrete variables, counts of sorts. Now, for the most part in this class, you're going to get by just fine if you make definitions of categorical and numeric variables. If you include just those two definitions in your course notes, then this class should be fine. If you expect 
to go on to more statistics courses or you have an affinity for statistics in general and you think you're going to do more complicated modeling, more complicated statistical modeling requires knowledge of these extra groupings for variables. But if you're not going to go on to more complicated statistical models and you're just going to do your best to make it through this class, totally fine to just write down definitions of categorical and numeric. So I'm going to highlight keywords that I think you should add to your course notes. And I'd like you to put down you know, my definition of them, which in this case is going to be fairly simple, variables with names or labels or numbers for numeric. And then try to give yourself some extra examples. Don't just take the examples I have. See if you can develop your own examples. Our next topic for this lecture is going to be variable relationships. Within any given data set, we often assign variables to one of two, eh, kind of two and a half later on, but let's just for now start with two uh, relationships. You can either have an explanatory variable a variable that explains others. So that's a variable that is doing the explaining and a response variable. These are the general relationships we have between variables. Response is a variable that is responding to another variable. OK, if those are too general for you, we can think of really simple examples. If you're thinking of plants, specifically plant growth, then we expect plant growth to be explained by sunlight and water. So the way I want you to think of this is plant growth is going to respond to the explanation of sunlight plus water explains plant growth. So I think that's going to be the best example you can give yourself. As you go through your course notes and you write down my definition of explanatory and response variables, and then you go give your own definition of these words, try to give yourself a really simple example like plant growth with sunlight and water. You can come up with almost anything you need. Uh, if you want to keep it easy in this sort of growth scenario, just stick to humans. What do humans need to grow? And then figure out which of those variables are explaining and which of those variables are responding. So those were our topics within my whiteboard scenario here. Let's jump over into our studio and start looking at data formats. Now I'm going to use, and let's see if I can zoom in to help us out here, the data set tooth growth, which is a data set built into R already available to us. It takes a little bit of work to get a data set into R. So I'm just going to start us out nice and simple with a data set already in R. So if you just type out tooth growth, mind the capital T and G, then you should be able to see this. It's probably a smaller data set, but it looks kind of big at first. You should see this data set with three named columns. We have len, sup, and dose. Those are named columns. And here in the rows, we have specific observations. So two words you should add to your, three words you should add to your course notes are data frame. That's what we're looking at here. 
a data frame is a named, in this case, tooth growth, two-dimensional, it has rows and columns, structure that holds our data. So our first word to write in our course notes is data frame. It is a named, in this case, it is named tooth growth, two-dimensional rows and columns, structure that holds data inside R. The second word we should write down in our course notes is observations. Each row in a data frame is an observation. So for whatever we are measuring the tooth growth of, the first length here of the measured thing had 11.5 for its tooth growth. It was given the supplement VC and it was given dose of 0.5. This next row, the third row here, is a new measured thing. For each measured thing, specifically an observation, there is variables that describe different characteristics of the observation. So your second word is observation. Those are the rows of a data frame. And your third word to write in your course notes here is variable. Those are the characteristics of the observations that we measured, and they're recorded in the columns. Let's see if we can learn a little bit more R here and help explain what tooth growth is all about. And it might make those uh, words have a little bit more meaning. A trick in R code is if you put a question mark before a named variable in R and hit enter, it pulls up a help file for you. So it turns out the data set named tooth growth measures the effect of vitamin C on tooth growth in guinea pigs. So in fact, when you type out tooth growth and you look at the data frame itself, each row here is a new guinea pig. This is the first guinea pig measured. This is the second guinea pig measured. It gives you a little bit of a description, which I'll let you read on your own. You can see the format is a data frame with 60 observations, that is rows, and three variables, columns. The first one is tooth length. It should probably tell us what units that was measured in, but maybe it does up here. Nope, I don't see what units tooth length was measured in. Oh, well. Supplement type is down here. Notice supplement type is recorded as VC, which it looks like stands for vitamin C, or OJ, or orange juice. Because VC and OJ are names or labels, supplement type here is a categorical variable. One annoying thing about R, and by all means, there's going to be a few of them as we go throughout the semester. So if you need to complain about them, show up in office hours and complain. I'll hear it all. R calls categorical variables factors. Factor is just a synonym for categorical. So anytime we use categorical, we can use factor. Anytime we use the word factor, we mean categorical. And the last variable in this data frame is dose, which is numeric. And it's the amount of milligrams per day we gave to each guinea pig. So here is your task after this video. If you want to go practice through our new words of data format, I encourage you to use the built-in data set plant growth and see if you can use the new words in complete sentences. Data frame, observations, variables, numeric, categorical. You should be able to get through a reasonable explanation of this data set plant growth using the new words from this lecture. And if you want to include the plant growth as an example in your course notes, I think that would be a great idea.